Hi, my name is Jean-François Lacasse. I'm the Senior Staff Program Line Manager for 5G Markets at Marvell. So today we have a great panel to discuss a very disruptive partnership. Uh, first, we have Patter Forbes, the Director of Radio Platform Development at Analog Devices, and Alan Hines, Director of Engineering at Benetel. So before we start, I would like to provide a brief history of this program. So in 2019, ADI and Marvell announced a partnership looking to disrupt an emerging segment of the open RAN radio market. So the work led that year to solidifying the ideas and the partnership, and then ultimately to the definition of a ready-to-market reference platform um, in the form of an ORAN 32T32R massive MIMO radio. Um, in 2020, we extended this partnership after a few rounds of RFI and RFQs, and we chose to enlist radio specialist Benetel on the design of this massive MIMO radio unit hardware. So Pattern Allen, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, to discuss this partnership and the technology that is required to develop the next generation of massive MIMO radios. So I'd like to explain to the audience like each of our contribution to this partnership. For example, Marvell brings the baseband technology consisting of uh, the, the silicon and the lower layer one beam forming and management software that leverages the Octeon Fusion baseband platform. So I would like to discuss what aspects of the design we are each supporting and, and then give an update on the availability of the our radio unit uh, at the end of the, of the panel. So Pater, let's, let's start with you and your contribution. Sure, Th thanks Jeff. And let me start by saying I'm very excited about uh, our collaboration and how we're going to bring competitive massive MIMO solutions uh, to the market. So from the ADI side over the years, we've established a, a market and technology leadership position uh, in software defined radios. Uh, which include our highly integrated low power transceivers and digital front end technology, including PA efficiency algorithms. And that is really the core of what we're, we're bringing to the table uh, in this, uh, this partnership. So uh, in addition, the unit includes our high speed clocking and synchronization solutions, our receiver front end technology, uh, and our, our uh, uh, highly efficient uh, low noise uh, uh, power solutions. And, you know, finally, uh, we've been involved with the massive MIMO market for many years now since the outset, um, and we've learned the challenges in building a massive MIMO radio unit, and we bring that knowledge and systems expertise to bear. Great. Alan, uh, from your perspective. Yeah, thank you, Jeff. Um, I'm very happy to be here. And, and for me, the real potential of the ORAN approach is is the opportunity it presents to bring the best practitioners of each subsystem together. And that's exactly what this partnership is doing. So Benetel has over 20 years experience in radio design, uh, both of, of some of the biggest names in the industry and, and also our own radio units. And that requires us to have deep experience and expertise in not just RF, but also in system level integration design and troubleshooting. Um, now the ORAN approach, one of the biggest challenges is indeed system integration and massive MIMO radio units provide the biggest challenge and the highest bar in that. So the power of this partnership and the excitement for me lies in combining that deep domain expertise as a system builder uh, to anticipate the challenges, but also very importantly to provide cost-effective solutions uh, using the best technologies available. Um, so, so we're really looking forward to the partnership. This is really exciting. So this partnership clearly brings years of complementary experience to create this new breed of, of, of radios. So our customers are very focused on uh, CapEx and OPEX, like how much does it cost to operate? How, how much does it cost to manufacture and, and design? So it's definitely a challenge to design massive MAMO radio platforms of that magnitude uh, and, and keep them low power and cost effective when, when we're using traditional approaches such, such as uh, FPGAs, for instance. Alan, for, from a hardware perspective, can, can you tell us about how working with uh, a purpose-built silicon platform helps design a more optimal um, and better product quicker? So obviously there's a role for FPGAs in, in, in rapid customization uh, in mid-volume products, JF, but it's very challenging to provide a massive MIMO platform uh, without purpose-built silicon due to the complexity of the end-to-end -end system. So naturally we see huge benefits in, in having access and using Marvell's Merchant Silicon uh, to not just for that um, cost perspective, but also from a radically lower power consumption perspective. And power is critically important in massive MIMO systems because reducing power consumption reduces the thermal load and thermal load drives heat sinks and heat sinks drive, drive weight. And we know now that in the market, uh, that power consumption and, and weight uh, parameters are critically important. About 50% of the weight of MIMO systems comes from, um, from the thermal management subsystems. Um, so a, a system level view demands that we optimize the RF chain signal processing 
and system power consumption, uh, and that requires the best performance silicon and analog technologies. Yeah, these are great points. Patter, uh, from a transceiver technology point of view, can you highlight the main advantages of using the ADI transceiver technology in terms of power, cost, and, and performance? Sure, yeah. You know, so our philosophy when we design these transceivers is, is to look at the system level challenges and, and see how we can solve them. We start there. Um, and one of the first things we learned about Massive MIMO, uh, as, as Alan has outlined, is that the thermal challenges are, are very significant. There's a lot of processing power concentrated in a very small area, which can create a lot of thermal hotspots. Um, and so we start with a very low power transceiver design. And then by integrating the DFE with the transceiver, we offload that functionality uh, from the core processor or FPGA where it was traditionally implemented. Um, and we spread uh, the thermal load so that uh, hotspots are avoided. Um, and then from a, from a radio perspective, we use a zero IF architecture uh, that simplifies the RF front end filtering and frequency planning significantly uh, compared to using RF sampling architectures that sample in the three to six gigahertz sort of range. Um, this relaxes the RF front end filtering by up to 75 dB in some co-location scenarios. And that translates into real size, uh, weight and cost savings uh, in the filters. Yeah, so we definitely spent a lot of time on the on the hardware, and and, and it's really important to do so because it's uh, it's important to have a good foundation uh, for a market ready reference design. But I'd like to spend a little bit of time on the software, um, and then you know because another major hurdle for for our customers is the maturity and and even the availability of the required software to operate these massive MIMO radios. So. What are we doing uh, in this partnership to mitigate this concern? So Marvel is providing production ready layer one, uh, beam forming and management software to enable customers to quickly get to market. Uh, Better, you also have instrumental software that needs to run on this massive mammal radio and, and quite a significant contribution in terms of, uh, of, of software. Can you please elaborate a little bit on, on, on your contribution? Sure, I fully agree. Software is a, a hugely important aspect of this of this design. So we, we provide our transceiver control software, which abstracts a lot of the complexity in the radio control. And then moving on to the algorithms, you know that the PAs consume more power than anything else in the board. So it's it's really important to pay close attention there. Uh, and the DPD and CFR algorithms uh, that ADI has developed um, for linearizing those PAs uh, are really key. So we partner very closely uh, with the leading PA vendors to ensure our, our DPD and CFR algorithms are, are co-optimized with their PA design and result in the most efficient solution. Um, and then in additional pieces, we also provide uh, our antenna control, uh, uh, antenna calibration algorithm uh, that reduces cost compared to alternative architectures uh, while not impacting uh, throughput. That's great. Thank you. First, thank you very much uh, for this partnership, uh, everyone here. Tr tremendous uh, co cooperation. Um, we have an amazing expertise in silicon, hardware, software, baseband, RF. I mean, the market is really in good hands uh, as we make sure that all these pieces fit together. Um, and that's another thing that's important that we haven't touched, uh, we didn't have time to touch on so much, but we, we do a great deal of heavy lifting in terms of the physical design, but also the integration of this unit to make sure everything works together. Um, so, so thank you very much for your collaboration on this, on this program. So in terms of availability now, the platform is expected to be field ready by in, in the first half of 2022. So if you have any questions or, or you are interested to know more about the Massive MAMO radio unit, please do not hesitate to contact Marvell, or ADI or Benetel, and then we'll be uh, happy to discuss uh, more in depth the Massive MAMO radio unit program with you guys. Thank you very much for your time.